everyone! Welcome to the week six picks and the week five reviews here. As you can see, Crixus and Mr. Porcupine are here to help us out! Jesus Christ! Alright, um, where'd Porcupine go? Alright, anyway, um, Crixus is gonna be assisting us again here. You guys seem to love it when Crixus basically assists by doing nothing but annoy me during the entire filming. But anyway, um, Week six picks, week five review. I went nine and five last week. One more loss than I did the week before. Still respectable showing for me as far as I'm concerned. But anyways, maybe we'll get into all that in a second. Week started off last Thursday night. St. Louis at home against the Arizona Cardinals. St. Louis basically whoops that Cardinals ass. Brings the Cardinals back down to reality. Only allows three Arizona points in that game. Now granted, the Arizona defense looked good too. To only give up 17 points, to allow a home team to only give up 17 points, excuse you, that's still impressive. Arizona's defense is still very impressive, but I I think the, the tarnish is coming off a bit. Like people are saying like, you know, Cobb is going to take them to great heights and Fitzgerald is still the shit. No one will deny that even though he finally dropped a reception. Um, or dropped a pass. It's, you can't drop a reception. A reception is caught. Anyway, um, I still see Arizona as a very solid team. They're a team that can make it into the playoffs, maybe win a game in the first or second round, but uh, people people got really hyped up when they went undefeated for a little run there, but now it's, it's like, all right, everyone, let's just calm down. This team really isn't anything that special, and St. Louis just showed us that last week. All right, uh, going to the Sunday games, and by the way, I got that prediction wrong. I thought Arizona was going to be somewhat the real deal and be able... Anyway, uh, was going to be able to beat uh, the St. Louis Rams at home, and apparently we have a little camera whore with us now. And Girl Fiend may or may not be enticing Crixus to steal the spotlight here. But anyway... Um, Going into Monday's games, excuse me, Sunday's games, we have Miami at Cincinnati, and I'm just going to talk from behind Crixus's nose the entire time here, apparently. Um, Miami beats Cincinnati at Cincinnati. Who the hell saw this coming? I did, and I told you guys, and there's some Cincinnati Bengals fans that went, oh, you better, you better show the Cincinnati Bengals defense some respect. This is the real deal. They're, they're not going to lose to the Dolphins at Cincinnati. Bullshit! Miami was due for a win. They're a much better team than what their record shows, please. Miami Miami lost to the Cardinals in overtime. They're playing teams tough. They're in a tough division, minus the Jets. Miami is a much better team, is basically what I'm getting at. And, I don't know, people in Cincinnati are convinced that their team is a bunch of superstars when... They're a mediocre team, much like Miami, but Miami was due for a win, and I saw this as a clear victory for them. They came in as an underdog into Cincinnati, and they won, and I picked a crackly deal with it. Indianapolis beats Green Bay. Wow, I got this game wrong. Green Bay is giving up. I mean, great, they gave up a lot of points last year and only lost one game in the regular season, but Green Bay is just giving up way too many points. They're playing soft against inexperienced teams. Like, I mean, Indianapolis, as a rookie quarterback, has a team that just got decimated by everyone last year. And they choked. They got up in this game by three touchdowns. Actually, I think it was two touchdowns and a field goal, but who's counting? Anyway, Green Bay choked in the second half of this game. They just let Indianapolis march down, take control of this game, and... They just did not look like a championship caliber team, Green Bay does. I mean, I, they didn't look like that last year in the playoffs. And now they didn't look like this in the second half of this game last week. Okay. All right. Um, Crixus apparently has jumping beans in his feet today. Baltimore beats Kansas City 9-6. to six. Um... Are we seriously going to have to listen to that the entire video, Crixus? Anyway, um, what can we say? Um, field goals. Um, the one thing that became the bigger story in this game is when Castle got knocked out and the Kansas City home crowd cheered, like gave practically a standing ovation for him being knocked out on the turf. 
Yes. And now people are going to be like, oh, some Philadelphia fan to criticize this because, you know, Philadelphia is where they cheered Michael Irving when he got a stinger or whatever it was and got carted off the field. Um, okay, yeah, that was ignorant for Philadelphia to do and all that. But there's like a bit of rivalry between Philadelphia and Dallas. That plays into it. It doesn't excuse what happened, but it plays into it. And it was also on the road. This wasn't like Dallas fans cheering for Michael Irvin getting injured. Like, yes, okay, Castle sucks. He's doing a terrible job in Kansas City. For your home fans to cheer, to cheer when he gets literally knocked unconscious? Fuck you, Kansas City! Anyway, um, as for the game itself, not really much to go over. I mean, Jesus Christ, Flacco with 187 yards. Again, this is the Flacco I fear that could be the biggest detriment to this Ravens team. This team will go as far as Flacco takes them. And with this offense gearing up, basically behind the arm of Flacco to lead them to the promised land, you're going to have a game like this pop up out of nowhere. Like Kansas City is a defense that Flacco and the Ravens should have carved up. Anyway, give the ball to Ray Rice a little more. That you know that couldn't hurt things. Anyway, um, next we have, if I can read the paper, Atlanta beating the Washington Redskins. This is another game I had picked wrong. Um, Matt Ryan, 340 plus yards in the air again. Jesus Christ! Again, <laughs> if this guy shits the bed in the playoffs again. He is going to be just just notoriously known as one of the worst playoff quarterbacks ever, but his stats in the regular season are always so superior. What the hell is the matter with this guy? Win a playoff game. I almost said Flacco. Flacco's one playing playoff games. Ryan. Oh, my God. Matty Ice, what are we going to do with you? And, and Tony Gonzalez still getting 100-plus yards as a tight end. I mean, God, the guy's 60 years old. Jesus Christ, that guy's a beast to this day. New York Giants <laughs> beating Cleveland. Now, this was a game where Cleveland got out to a couple touchdowns, uh, two touchdown lead right in the very beginning. It was like, wow, are the Giants really going to shit the bed against the, the Cleveland Brownies? The answer is hell no. They end up winning the game 41-27. My God, talk about a team that can't play with the lead. <laughs> the Browns acted like the game was over after they got up by two touchdowns, and then Eli Manning and the crew just, just took that team apart as they should have. Um, Josh Whedon, props to you. You almost got 300 yards passing. That's that's an improvement. That's something that that, that Cleveland should be should build off of and be like, hey, they went up against pretty good defense. Almost had a 300 yard passing day. That's a solid number, and that's a rookie quarterback. Anyway, um, we have Pittsburgh beating Philadelphia. Now, I know I'm considered a homer for picking Philadelphia to win this game. Going to Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh was a three-point favorite in this. Philadelphia covered the spread only by losing by two points, but still. If you hold the Pittsburgh Steelers to 16 points at Heinz Field, whether there's a tail in front of me or not, you better beat the Steelers. My God, they had this game controlled. And again, Vic leads the team in an under five-minute lead-taking scoring drive. I mean, we could criticize him all we want for all these fumbles, all these interceptions, and my God, they pissed the shit out of me because he fumbled the ball three more times in this game. But when it comes down to the end of the game, for whatever reason, he gets his shit together. He gets that lead scoring drive. This is the third time he's done it this season. So, I know, I hear you, Philadelphia. I hear you. I want to see a better quarterback in there. But, for whatever reason, Michael Vick keeps these games close, except the Arizona game. And he comes back to take the lead late in the game, and then the defense didn't hold up this week, which, alright, you can't count the defense every single time. One thing I tell you about this game, uh, one thing I'm very envious of, is Coach Tomlin for the, for the Pittsburgh Steelers. That is a guy, if you look at him, you never question if he has control of this team. You never question if he says something and the team won't do it. That is just something that I don't see in Andy Reid. I just feel like Andy Reid just doesn't have that respect from his players anymore. And you see a, a coach like Tomlin on the Steelers, and you just see him as a guy that gets shit done. And my God, I would love to see a coach like that on the Eagles because I am sick and fed up of Andy Reid. Anyway, um, Seattle beating Carolina. Um, Cam Newton, it's, it's, it's officially as close to rock bottom as you can get. I mean, Cam Newton, the sky was the limit for him this year. 
and he has just looked like shit. I don't know what happened. Carolina tried building the team around him in the off season, trying to make that offense a little bit better for him, but he's just he's it's just him that's not doing it. I mean, it's just flat out him that is not getting the job done. All the potential in the world, and it just not is showing up in the stats this year for him, or the record for that matter. Chicago beat the Jacksonville Jaguars. Who saw this one coming? 41-3. to Wow. It's officially a horse race. I did have the Cleveland Brownies as the worst team in the NFL. But Jacksonville is given a good run, oh, good, a good run for the money as to who's the worst team in the NFL. But Chicago, boy, that's two routes back to back. Again, this is a team that I had picked as beating the Eagles in the playoffs, and um, I, I see Chicago making a lot of noise in the playoffs. Um, I still see San Francisco as a far more superior team, but Chicago, as long as Cutler keeps his shit together, the offensive line. Blocks for him and he doesn't hit people on the sidelines anymore, then things will be great. Minnesota beating the Tennessee Titans 30 to 7. My God, is Minnesota officially the real deal? We may have to come to grips with that. My God, I slammed Minnesota pretty bad in my week one prediction video. But man, I just I just don't know. They're just they're they're competitive with everyone, they're beating everyone, and oh my god, I just this team just really came out of nowhere, and they're really impressing the shit out of me. New England beating the Denver Broncos. Manning was about to come back and win this game. Manning, in the second half of this game, showed you why he was one of the top three quarterbacks in this generation. For the record, I consider him the third best. I consider Breeze and Brady to be above him. But we'll, 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 we'll go into that argument another day. Manny was trying to take over this game and win it for the Broncos, but unfortunately, a little running back by the name of McGahee plays for the Denver Broncos. That drop on fourth and one and that fumble under 10 minutes left by McGahee cost the Broncos any chance of coming back to win this game. This game was a full-out route through three quarters. Manning was on a long shot to come back and win this game. But those two, which that, on, that was actually on a third and one, actually th I think it was a third one or fourth and one, where McGahee dropped that pass, and that's basically a turnover. And then fumbling in the, in the red zone, that's another turnover. Jesus Christ. I feel, I feel sorry. I feel sorry for all the Denver fans that you had to watch what could have been one of the most spectacular comebacks in just the recent past get, get just basically just wiped away because some douchebag can't catch a ball and can't hold on to the ball and he runs with it. Um, that's why McGahee has played for several teams because he just gets thrown around like garbage because he never makes a name for himself anywhere worthy enough to stay on one team. Anyway, um, San Francisco beating Buffalo 45-3. Now, is there still anyone out there that doubts San Francisco is the best team in the league? Is there anyone that doubts, like when I told you that they weren't a flash in the pan last year and that Harbaugh was going to get his shit together on the team even more and take this team to the Super Bowl and I have them predicted to winning the Super Bowl? Do you people still doubt that? Because I still get people going, oh, I don't know, I think San Francisco's going to flatten out in the middle of the season. Oh, bullshit. San Francisco stomping that ass once again. New Orleans! You won a game! And I finally told you you'd win a game. All right. They beat San Diego. Um, hell of a game. Drew Bees. Drew Bees. Drew Brees. And again, this is one of the reasons why I consider him the second greatest quarterback of this generation. Uh, another 370 yard performance. Uh, breaking Johnny Unitas's touchdown consecutive games with a touchdown record and all that good shit. But, anyways, um, uh, by the way, I thought Drew Brees was the second best quarterback of this generation before he broke that record for the record. Anyway. Um, good, dominant performance, um, San Diego is in it, um, but New Orleans, for whatever reason, can't get a lengthy lead in a game, and that's to their detriment. Houston, beating the Jets at home, the Jets decline, just sinks more and more every single week, though. The Jets play this game very competitively. For all the broken parts on that team, and all the new players, and all this other shit, they actually look decent in this game. And Jesus Christ didn't even have to come in and play. They did it under the arm of Sanchez. Did you have to do that right in front of me? Did you have to swing your head and throw your slob around in front of me? Was that necessary? Of course it was, Crixus. Of course it was. You're such a good boy. You're such a good boy. All right, all right. Anyway, um, that concludes the week five review. Week six picks. 
Now, I thought this game was going to be a good game when I saw the schedule early on in the season. We got Pittsburgh at Tennessee. I figured, you know, this is a home game for Tennessee. Uh, Pittsburgh is, you know, a little bit beaten down compared to their Super Bowl years. But I just, just nothing about Tennessee has impressed me this year. I just, I, I see them as, as one of the scrub teams, in all honesty. And Pittsburgh, while I don't see them as a playoff team this year, they're definitely good enough to beat Tennessee at Tennessee. Um, but, yeah, who knows? And as we know, my Thursday night picks suck. So, um, Pittsburgh's going to win this game, so put your money on Tennessee, since I can't pick Thursday night games for shit. Oakland at Atlanta. Atlanta is going to have another triple touchdown victory in this one. Uh, Cincinnati at Cleveland. Ohio Bowl Part 2! To decide the ultimate football team in Ohio at the professional level, which means absolutely nothing. Um, I have Cincinnati winning this game again. They beat Cleveland earlier this year in Cincinnati. And yeah, anyway, Cincinnati, you're going to win this game. St. Louis at Miami. I think with how good St. Louis played Arizona last week, only allowing three points. Uh, granted, they didn't put up a lot of points, but then again, Arizona is a phenomenal defense. Um, I think they're going to carve up Miami, and it's at Miami. Um, Tannehill is coming into his own there. Um, I, I wouldn't say it would be a blowout. I think it's going to be a touchdown win for St. Louis. Uh, but St. Louis is really gelling right now. I like the flow they got going. I like the flow that Miami's got going, too. But I think St. Louis is going to edge us out with a touchdown victory. Indianapolis at New York Jets. Um, I just hate the Jets. I just hate the Jets, in all honesty. I think the Jets could win this game. But congratulations, Andrew Luck. You got your first victory in the state of New York. Unless they played Buffalo. I don't think they played Buffalo. No, they did. Okay. Anyways, in New York City, we'll say. Even though it's in New Jersey. Who's counting? Anyway. Detroit at Philadelphia! Oh my god, I had this game pick. Oh, we are not doing that for the rest of the video. Oh, no, we are not. Oh, you're going to stop that right now, Crixis! Anyway, Detroit at Philadelphia. I had this game picked early on this season as a game that Philadelphia was going to lose. I had this picked as one of their four, actually five losses this year, but... My God, Detroit has looked like shit. Megatron Calvin Johnson really has not come into his own this year. I don't know what's really happened to that. I know fantasy football owners of him are just, like, furious with his lack of play this year. But, um, anyway, um, I see, I see Philadelphia win this game. It's a home game. Um, yeah, Detroit's coming off a bye and everything. And, yeah. I'll tell you what I do see happening. I really like the front four for Detroit, and I see this as being the game that we finally get Michael Vick knocked out of the lineup. <sighs> Not that I want that to happen, but in all honesty, Michael Vick is only going to last so long with that Swiss cheese offensive line in front of him, and it's just inevitable. It's going to happen. So for all you Nick Foles fan, you're probably going to see him get some game time this week, because in all honesty, that front four of Detroit is gonna is arguably the best front four of Philadelphia's faced all season. So I I look to see them not get Vic out of the game, but I still see Philadelphia coming away with a victory here. Um, let's see, what do we got next? Kansas City at Tampa Bay. <laughs> Finally a game Tampa Tampa should win, but anyway, um congratulations Tampa. You got you you got a victory over a bumblefuck team. Uh, Dallas at Baltimore. Oh, oh, God, I hope they show this game on television. What are you nodding your head for, Crixus? Anyway, um, Baltimore is going to give Dallas a worse loss than that time they went into Dallas at the, la the last game at Texas Stadium in Week 15. Do you guys remember that? Oh, actually, wasn't that Willis McGahee that busted two 50-plus yard touchdowns in the end of that game? Uh, if memory serves me correct, one of you people in Dallas may want to remind me about that because I'm sure it's burned into your memories. Um, on a side note, one thing about Philadelphia, I just want to backtrack for a second. I heard this and I couldn't believe it. Philadelphia, the offense, has had one, has had one offensive play over 40 yards this entire season. One! How is that possible? 
with that receiving core of the fastest receiving core with with Macklin and uh, just, oh, and Deshaun. What the hell? How is that possible? Oh my god! And just the red zone turnovers and everything. And anyway, I'm, I'm sorry. I went back to Philadelphia. Let's go back to more bashing in Dallas. Um, yeah, Dallas. Um, Baltimore is going to fuck you up. It is not going to be pretty. Dallas looks abysmal against Chicago on Monday Night Football. Yeah, they're coming off a bye week. Um, hopefully they've got their loon, their wounds well licked. Can I speak properly? Their wounds well licked. <laughs> anyway, um, <laughs> Dallas is going to get obliterated. Uh, New England at Seattle. I guess it's going to be a real close game. Um, but I still think Brady and the crew are the better team in this one. Um, I think this is going to be a close game. Um, this is, again, one of those games you have to go all the way out west for New England. Uh, playing a rookie quarterback, I mean, you're playing against just a real elite group of players, as always, as New England always is. Um, well, under Brady, anyway. Uh, not so much pre-Brady. Anyway, uh, New England's going to win this one. Buffalo at Arizona. I see Buffalo winning this game. I see Fit Fitzpatrick having a hell of a day against this defense. For some reason, I don't know what it is. This is that one pick. Like I said, I like to pick one pick that's an underdog pick. And this is Buffalo going into Arizona as the underdog. And I see Buffalo winning this game. Call me crazy. Crixis? Bloody hell. Oh, look. It's the, um, the miserable girl with the piano lessons. Anyway, um... Anyway, uh, yeah, Buffalo, I see being in Arizona. Giants at San Francisco. Woo. Bad news for you, Giants. You're getting that ass whooped. Um, there's, there's just no two ways about that. Minnesota at Washington. Now, I've been high on RG3 all season. Um, he got a dose of reality. I think he's going to play a little bit more hesitant since he basically got the shit knocked out of him last week against Atlanta. Um, I don't see you winning this one. Even if RG3 plays, even if RG3 has a great game, um, I really don't see you beating Minnesota. I just think Minnesota, for whatever reason, they don't really have too many studs and stars on that team. They're just playing good football. And when you're playing good football, you can beat anyone. And until that team shows me they're not playing good football, I'm going to see them as a team that can be a solid team like the Redskins. So, uh, Minnesota, congratulations. you got to win over the NFC East. Green Bay at Houston! Oh, Houston is on a tear. Green Bay is a soft team. Uh, Green Bay comes out with a second-half soft performance like they did last week. Houston will eat them alive. Eat them alive. Anyway, um, solid game for Sunday night. Uh, Monday night game, Denver at San Diego. I'm giving the edge to the home team on this. I know, I know Peyton Manning has looked great the past two weeks. And Peyton Manning would have and should have won that game last week against the Patriots. But again, McGahee plays for the Broncos, unfortunately. So, yeah. Uh, buys this week. Uh, by San Diego, if I can say. San Diego's going to win that game at home. Buys this week. Chicago, New Orleans, Carolina, and Jacksonville. That wraps up week six picks, week five review. Um, to all the Cincinnati fans out there, I accept your apology for coming to my video last week and tearing me apart for saying I'm a complete idiot saying that the Dolphins were going to go in to Cincinnati and win that game, and they did just that. So, Crixus, thank you for doing another great video. Anyway, have a great day, everyone. Enjoy your football. Crixus, I will challenge you to a fight for the battle of the champion of Capua. None of you know out there probably even know what that means. Anyway, have a great day, everyone.